Here's a quick look at the car now that it's at home. And you can see that it's in pretty good shape. There aren't any dents on the sides or to the windows or anything like that, but uh, there are some dents on the, here's the, the bumper cover. And then there's some dents on the hood. Here's one, and then there's another one on top. And um, at this point, we only thought that the damage was to the bumper cover and the hood, but we didn't, we didn't realize there was more to come. So, and here's a, here's a picture of the inside. See the airbag didn't blow. And for some reason, Kia airbags have a hard time blowing. I don't know, it makes me want to not buy a Kia, honestly. Um, but yeah, everything looks decent. This is the LX model, so there's no cruise control, and then it kind of has a basic functions. It does have air conditioning and Bluetooth, but uh, personally, I wish it had a cruise control. Now, this is what they do. They just throw all the parts in the back, and for some reason, they ripped out the, uh, the fender liners when they towed the vehicle. I don't know why they do that. It, it really upsets a lot of people. All right, guys, I am sitting on the ground here in front of the Kia Forte, and it is not looking too good here. So you can see that the hit did not hit the bumper. So I know that the frame is good, but pretty much all this plastic needs to be replaced. In addition to that, the air conditioner um, condenser up here in the front needs to be replaced, and the, um, the radiator. So I believe that's coolant. I can smell it. So I'm assuming all that needs to be replaced. Now there is a little bit of um, metal that I need to straighten out. You can see this frame rail here. And then this lower part of the frame rail. Uh, very weak, you know, it's unsupported. You can see that it, it's bent. So, and you can see right here, there's a little kink which indicates that there was a bend. All right, now my condenser is just hanging there. So, and I'm not gonna disconnect these lines until I, I know um, what's going on with them because I don't see a dryer. Uh, usually it's like a filter and a dryer um, and I don't see one. So I gotta do a little research for the AC system. But this just bolts right up. There's probably just a couple O-rings in there. Looks super easy. And uh, so here, now you can see the, the bend in the frame rail. So I, I have no doubt all of this stuff is straight, but this down here just needs to be, needs to be pulled out a little bit. So it doesn't look too difficult. And that's it guys. From here, we're done disassembling and we can see everything that's wrong with the car and from here you know it's just just about ordering stuff and putting everything back together so within about two hours we can see everything that's wrong with the car and then um, it's really just kind of fun from here all right guys i had fun we ordered a car the same day we paid for it ran down there picked it up put it here on the driveway disassembled it and found everything that was wrong with it uh let's see we need to get tires Maybe some wheels, we'll see. And, uh, you know, of course, our new radiator, new condenser, uh, bumper cover, and all the little plastic stuff that goes underneath the car. So, it doesn't sound too bad, right? So, hopefully, we'll make some money on this guy. And here we are the next day. I already have most of the parts on order, at least all the big ones. I have the, uh, the radiator support, the condenser, and the radiator on order. Most of it's from eBay. Uh, the Kia Soul that I had last time um, had some really cheap parts from the dealer. I was kind of surprised. And uh, when I went to get the same parts for this Kia Forte, they were a lot more expensive. So I don't know if it's because of the year. This is a 2017. The other one, uh, the Kia Soul, is a 2012. So I don't know if parts just get cheaper as they get older. I'm not sure. Anyways, uh, I still have to get the bumper cover. I'll be getting that on. Uh, eBay also but this is a this is a styrofoam piece here they call it the absorber and um, you can see it's still together for the most part 
you know, it's at least the pieces are very near each other. So what I'm going to try to do is retain this and keep it for the for the next one. So what I'm going to try to do is fill this with foam uh, so everything gets held together and then I'm going to take it off and then just put it on the next one. So let's see how it goes here. I got to have a half bottle of foam, spray foam, and uh, I'm going to try to use the remaining of it on this bumper. that's gonna work pretty good so I'm gonna let that sit I'll probably let it sit overnight and then all I have to do is remove the clips and I believe everything will come off in one piece so right on that saved me probably about 60 bucks hey guys I have to tell you I lost some of the videos so unfortunately I can't show you part of the assembly process but uh, you can see that the car is uh, somewhat assembled there's some lights on it the condenser is there and the radiator is there so everything's uh, coming along and in this next clip we're installing the uh, Freon okay guys it's three o'clock in the afternoon now and uh, I've been running it for hours in order to boil off all the uh, moisture that's in the lines so I wanted to read something to you real quick and these are instructions for air conditioning Okay, continue to evacuate to a maximum of 250 microns. Close the vacuum pump and watch the rate of rise. If the vacuum does not rise above 1500 microns in three to five minutes, the system can be considered properly evacuated. These are instructions for a house air conditioning system. If the thermocouple vacuum gauge rises to beyond 5,000 microns, moisture is considerably still present. So in that case, you'd have to still use vacuum gauge to suck it down. So earlier this morning, um, I didn't change anything, but that's, that's what the case was. And uh, I would isolate the system, and immediately the pressure would increase to 5,000 microns. Actually, it would increase to 3,000 microns, but then it would hold steady. So I assumed I had moisture. Uh, now I've, I've been using the vacuum pump for hours, and now it's only increasing up to uh, 11, uh, maybe 1,200 microns. So. Here's my stopwatch. It's been eight minutes. Here's my micron gauge. That's upside down. So that's 1300 microns. And I, I wanna show something too, you guys. This is far more, this has far more resolution than my traditional analog gauge. So this says 30 inches of mercury, no matter what. But yeah, as you can see, this vacuum gauge has much more resolution. And um, so this enables me to really see if this thing has a leak and uh, what the levels are and diagnose the current status of the AC system. So if it has a leak, I can see it. If it has moisture, I can see it and so on. So all this stuff is pretty expensive. I think I bought the vacuum pump. For, for about 150, I really don't remember. Um, the manifold set, I probably got on Amazon. And then that digital gauge, I got it locally for a pretty good price. Uh, I think it was about $200, but online it was much more. So um, this is what I typically use when I'm working on AC systems for houses. Uh, but you know today I'm using it for my car, but the principles are still the same. I want to show you how I isolate it. 
it's going to increase. All right, so now that I'm confident that the system doesn't leak, uh, what I'm going to do is isolate it, isolate my gauge and the vacuum pump, and I'm going to inject uh, Freon into the system. All right, guys, we're about to have AC here. Um, so one thing I wanted to show you is that I'm connecting my Freon gauge or my Freon can right now along with the supply uh, hose and I'm actually pulling a vacuum on the hose as well right now so that helps to evacuate this hose during during the process so now all I have to do is isolate uh, the, my system here and that include that isolates my gauges and my pump and it keeps everything safe and then I can fill it with Freon. Let's get it going. So, I'm going to turn this off. Turn off my pump. And we'll fill it up. Now normally the car is supposed to be running, but I'm just trying to get some Freon in it. All right. So this is the low side and when I turn on the car, the pressure will go down and then the high side will go up. So now that I have some, some pressure in it, uh, my line is isolated. I can turn it off. My vacuum pump it has been running all day. <sighs> Alright, so I'm going to disconnect my, my lines. Get this mess out of the way. And I'll start the car. Well, you see the pressure went down a little bit. I can feel the can getting cold. That means that uh, there's a loss of pressure inside the can. It has nothing to do with the Freon inside. It just means that there's, the uh, Freon is escaping. Or the pressure is escaping, I should say. Hey guys, the AC seems to be working okay. In fact, I think I might have put in a, just a little bit too much Freon because um, at a standstill or when the car is stopped, the uh, the clutch is cycling too often. So that means that the, uh, the pressure increases too much and then um, it shuts itself off and so on and so forth. So at a stop, you want the, uh, the AC to be cycling 
but not like every two seconds you know that just means that there's too much pressure so unfortunately when the car was running it got hot and I found a leak and if you look right here you can see that hose is leaking and uh, so just during the accident the radiator support was pushed back into the hose and it looks like it pinched it so another drawback of buying a salvage car but you know that hose is probably just a few dollars but it's unexpected and um, well I'll have to drain the the radiator coolant so yeah fun fun again this is a 2017 Kia Forte and this one has a transmission cooler sitting on the uh, transmission cover I don't know if you guys can pick it up but that line right there is smashed all right guys this view gives a pretty good detail of what's wrong here this hose was pushed back into the other hose which is on the bottom so I'm gonna have to uh, probably replace it because this is part of the transmission cooler and I don't want any problems with my transmission hey guys I'm gonna make this the end of the video it's getting a bit long so mechanically the the car is sound and the air conditioning is working and then from here on it's pretty much about painting and, and uh, getting the car sold so um, and uh, we'll go over the figures with you as well on how much money we made so See you in the next video.